Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, when you hit perfection, you just stop the fucking tape. Don't water it down. You know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. If it's your first time here, howdy, friend. Howdy, partner. You might be like, Evan, you're looking a little pale today. And in reality, you might be like, well, that's not true because you are a golden olive skin color. I can thank my Puerto Rican roots for that, can't I? You cat, your boy catches a little bit of vitamin D. I'm looking good. Okay. That's how, that's how that goes. Ladies and gentlemen, feeling a little pale. Energy might be a little lower because it's happened once again, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy has food poisoning. <sighs> I don't know who fucking did it to me. Somebody set me up. And you know what's kind of creepy? Facebook memories. Facebook memories sometimes make me realize that we're living in a simulation. Because 12 years to the date, 12 years to the date, which is another two, your boy had food poisoning. Okay? And I lost that battle with food poisoning as I have lost this battle with food poisoning. There's no winning against food poisoning. No matter what, food poisoning tells you what time it is. And you know what it is? It's never a good time. No one's ever got food poisoning and be like, you know what? I'm going to curl up with a with a book, lay in bed and just enjoy this food poisoning. Food poisoning, because you know how if you get sick, sometimes there's something, I don't know what it is about being sick. But if it's not that bad and I just need to rest, there's nothing better than me because your boy... Overworks too much. There's nothing better when, you know, doctor's orders, not a real doctor, because what doctors know, you know? Black helicopters, the vaccine, that's, fuck, now this episode's flagged. Stupid, Evan. But listen, I enjoy a good time of having a cold, having a little sniffles. Shit, even the vid wasn't that bad for me, okay? After getting through those first couple days... I was enjoying it. I was catching up on a lot of Meat Eater episodes. I even watched some stupid ass shows. Uh, what was that show I watch? Naked and Afraid of Love? I think that's what I watched. It was the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. All of those shows are so stupid. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. What we're here to talk about is there is no enjoyment with getting sick with food poisoning it's it literally is just it's just the worst okay and i don't want to get too graphic for you guys but why the fuck else are we here was it coming out of both ends at the same time sorry that's got to be rough for somebody's ears i apologize food poisoning will humble you Okay, because I feel like food poisoning is one of those things that just brings you to your knees. Like it it fucks up your body so bad that there's no being cool while you have food poisoning. Okay, at least that's how I feel. I literally, if it wasn't for Facebook, I wouldn't know the last time I got food poisoning because your boy's stomach is pretty good at handling stuff. But when I get food poisoning, I turn into a sniveling little fetus. Okay. I'm just done. Um, I I don't, I just, it sucks. Curling around the toilet, puking your brains out, feeling like you're going to die. It's got to be the worst. I mean, I'm sure 
There's somebody listening who's like, you should try to give birth. No, don't have to. Didn't eat the apple. That was y'all bad. Okay. Isn't that kind of crazy that there's, anyway, we're not going to get into religion. But because they ate the apple, God was like, you know what? You guys get the fucking pop out babies because, because you guys decided to fucking eat fruit. Apples are so healthy for you. And God was like, no, that's, that's the one that's doing you in. That's the one. There's no, 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 no. There's no coming back from this fucking apple. It may be, a, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But no, today you're going to have to deal. Your entire sex is going to have to deal with painful childbirth till the end of time because one person ate an apple. God is toxic. That is toxic, God. But God even admits he's a jealous God, right? Don't you dare fucking worship anybody else. Or I'm coming for you. And you're going to have to give childbirth out of your asshole. Something like that. That's what I felt like last night. Call back. You guys know what the fuck's going on here. But food poisoning will humble you. It was just such a bad time. I'll be honest with you. I was uh, I was going to do a job in Dallas. I was going to film this commercial for this company. Stayed at a buddy's house who ended up helping me with the job. And we got uh, we got food from this place. And I got this goddamn two ninety nine dollars salad. And all it was is they put iceberg lettuce in this little fucking styrofoam thing. And it was like the joke of the dinner. I'd be like, wow, there's Evan's two ninety nine dollars salad. Uh, I didn't know that it was a Trojan horse that would unleash death in me. And to be honest, to be fair to the salad, uh, I don't know if it's 100% the culprit. It's probably women eating the apple, to be honest with you. But I'm eating the apple, or I'm eating the apple, Jesus. But I ate the salad. You know, I worked uh, during the day filming. And the next day, my buddy and I are reviewing the footage to see, you know, make sure I got everything and didn't have to refilm. And your boy starts sweating. Whenever I start sweating and I'm, I'm indoors, it's not good. It's never a good sign when you just start sweating. But I'd also taken some vitamins. My buddy was like, here, try these vitamins. And uh, one of them was beef liver, which I was like, okay, I'll just try one. About 20 minutes later, your boy starts sweating. I had to take my jacket off. I'm like, it's definitely not hot in here, but for some reason, I'm sweating. And then I go upstairs and my stomach's a mess and uh, feel like I'm going to puke. So what does your boy do? I just start puking. I just, I fill up that toilet with puke. Okay. Everything that was in my soul. Okay. There was shit that came out from 1999. A Tamagotchi came out into that toilet. All right. Pokemon Red Edition ended up in that toilet. And then that passed. I felt a little queasy, but, you know, I had some water. I made a full recovery. was able to eat some pho before we headed home from Dallas to Austin. And then the next day, I wake up. I'm feeling okay. I work out. You know, this was yesterday, so Monday. And uh, start feeling queasy. And I'm like, okay, let's take it easy. I did my sauna in the garage. Mm, I just felt tired and it probably was because I worked through the weekend, didn't really have any rest days. And uh, I ate a bag of popcorn. Sometimes your boy just likes a bag of popcorn. All right. I was watching all a bunch of the Peacemaker episodes, trying to take my treat Monday as if it was my Sunday because it's President's Day. But I mean, OK. Watching a bunch of Peacemaker and then that feeling comes back and I'm like, oh, shit, this isn't good. And then I spent the next six hours in a fetal position just feeling like I'm battling the devil okay and it it peaked at about 11 30 p.m okay your boy could not sleep sitting on the toilet uh I have the chills the chills are the worst because I don't know if I'm really hot or cold I have a fucking hoodie on John snow fucking blanket around me and my stomach's just doing work and there's nothing like 
holding a trash can with your head inside of it while you're going to the bathroom. You just feel helpless. I'm like, this is the opportune time for someone to break into this house and do what they want. I literally would just be like, dude, just take whatever. Just do you have any water? Do you have any Alka-Seltzer with you? I feel like they would break in and they'd be like, there's a bad spirit in here. There's bad energy right now. And I don't want to be part of this. Um, but you know what's great? When you actually throw up everything out of your body, it just, you feel much better. Like you got it out and you're like, you know what? I'm ready for round two. But I knew that was a trick because part of me wanted to eat again. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird the way that happens? It's like the same thing when you're drinking, when you're young. You like, you know, recover at a party. You're like puking your brains out and you're like, I'm ready for fucking round two. I was always down for that. Always down for the cause. But I fucking puked everything out. And uh, I went in bed and I fucking watched like three episodes of Succession. Okay. Because that's what I'm obsessed with right now. Succession. It's a great fucking show. If you haven't seen Succession, then your life sucks. In this session. Stupid. So stupid. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when you don't really sleep at night and you try doing a podcast and you don't really have the energy, this is what you're going to get. Okay, you're going to get a somber, a somber episode. Okay, maybe that's good every now and then. On a nice little 2 22 on a Tuesday, you almost sucker for a stupid little thing like that. Isn't that weird? That's the date. 2 22 um, I was talking to a buddy uh, how the 90s are like almost, what, 20, 30 years ago? 20, 30 years ago? How fucking weird is that? It feels like they're 10 years ago and they're like 30. What the fuck? Fuck's happening with life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, speaking of what's happening with life. Are we about to go to war with Russia over Ukraine? And don't don't let me pretend to be like I'm completely educated on this situation. I try to stay in my lane. Do I know everything about what's going on with Russia and uh, Ukraine? No. But your boy tries to read a little bit. Okay. I try to see what's going on. And does it feel like we might go to war? Maybe. Seems like Russia's positioning themselves uh, to take action. It's going to be a weird thing. War is one of those things where, like a world war. I think it's one of those things where, especially a younger generation, haven't experienced war. You know, we've lived for quite some time without a world war. And uh, it feels like one of those things that can't happen. We're just like, yeah, no, it hasn't happened to us in our time. And I know you're, you're thinking about like Iraq and everything like that, but I feel like that was different. Um, and it's been a while. But I feel like an actual world war it makes you wonder if like the way things are going with China and everything with is war going to even be what we think about in our mind of, you know, in fucking bunkers and trenches and that kind of thing. Or is there a war already going on? Is and you can't necessarily look at it as a war. It's just like no countries are positioning self, themselves to... What's the word I'm looking for? Have the most advantages they can over another country. And that's what I think about with like TikTok and stuff like that. If you look at TikTok, how it's... Uh, there was that episode on uh, JRE where uh, their TikTok in China, they don't have the same kind of stuff that we have on ours. They control it, how long kids can be on it. And uh, they show them things that are educational. 
and basically boosting their uh, their youth. Over here, the algorithms and everything is, you know, it's it feels like it's just dumbing down a generation and like just making it so. Um, I don't know. It just feels like it's dumbing down a generation over here in a sense of just like the algorithm rewards anything superficial, anything stupid, uh, and almost trying to mold a certain kind of response that, hey, if you post this kind of stuff, this is the reaction it gets. They're not fucking rewarding science experiments in the States, you know? And that's like the weird thing that's happening is, you know, when you look at how much real estate China has, you know, bought up in America and like positioning themselves. It's kind of crazy. Um, is this an anti-China podcast? No, I believe we are the world, you know, Goombaya. Uh, but when you look at a communist country and a country that doesn't treat their citizens good at all, you got to be like, we got to keep our eye on you, you know? That's all, ladies and gentlemen. There was a lady. There was a lady, ladies and gentlemen. A teacher is going to jail. Well, she's already been sentenced. Uh, she laced cupcakes with sperm from her husband and gave it to her, her class. What the fuck is going on in the world, ladies and gentlemen? Teacher sentenced to 41 years after admitting to giving kids cupcakes laced with sperm. Hmm? What? Who said that? Uh, Cynthia Perkins, 36, admitted giving her students cupcakes laced with her now ex-husband sperm. She'd been sentenced to 41 years behind bars. Uh, this is a disgusting human. She admitted to more disturbing sex crimes like child pornography, second degree rape, and mingling of harmful substances. Uh, they were arrested in 2019 on more than 150 sex crimes. Jesus Christ. Listen. The war that everybody's been wanting to fight for humanity and safe spaces and everything like that those wars are already out there. These kind of situations where there's already monsters that you can fight. You don't have to go digging into the past to try to fucking cancel people. You don't have to go trying to pull down statues. You don't have to go try to just make the world look better on the surface. There's already battles that you can fight and things that you can do. And these are the kind of fucking monsters that are out there, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, what? Dude, if I had a kid and I found out their teacher did that shit, you'd have to go to jail. Ugh. And what if you ate one of the cupcakes? What if you were at school chaperoning that day and the teacher was like, hey, have a sweet treat? You're like, no, I'm good. I'm trying to watch. She's like, have a sweet treat. It's fucked up. Um, but that really is something that I think. It's like, it's weird to me. I think that's a hip, 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 hooray. Ladies and gentlemen, we just keep having strokes. I think that's one of the things that bugs me. Like the irony of people who want to cancel people, people who want to uh, try to like fight all these white knight, you know, ideologies. But it's like, why aren't you guys trying to do like combat stuff like this? Like you're so worried about all this other stuff, but then there's like so many kids and this is what fucks me up the most is when it's kids. Because it's like those things that happen in these experiences. They will like shape a kid for the rest of their life, you know, and it's fucked up. And I think those are what we should be focusing on is uh, these kind of situations rather than tearing down statues. I mean, we can do both if you really feel passionate, but just make sure you're doing the one that, you know, makes a difference rather than a statue that fucking birds shit on. Isn't that crazy? They're like, no, like who's really getting the short end of the deal? It's fucking pigeons. They're like, oh, that's great. I have one less thing to shit on. 
That's cool. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're fucking dying with this fucking food poisoning. Okay? That's what this episode has turned into. Uh, a man decaying into a lesser form of himself through food poisoning. Okay? A goddamn two ninety nine dollars salad put your boy on his ass. It humbled me. Because sometimes you think that you're this tough son of a bitch. And then you get a fucking little stomach bug. And then you got your head in a fucking trash can. Okay. And we, we like to be tough. We like to think that we're tough. Like, isn't it the whole like lions and wolves and all these people who grind? But then it's like you get food poisoning. That all goes out the window. Okay. I've been watching 1883. Might be my new favorite show. 1883. It shows you how much weaker modern people are than the past. The past keeps you humble. That's why it's important to learn from it and to have perspective. You know, that's what's so dope about those times is it makes you realize the journey and the struggle and the things that people did to have to get to where they wanted to go. Like, it's crazy. Even the idea of fucking planes, not fucking planes, but planes in general, aviation, where it's like, hey, you can get in here and just fly across the world. If you try to do that shit in the past, you're on a boat for six months and they didn't even know if you were going to make it. Like, people would just go on these open sea voyages and you just didn't know. You're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know whatever happened to them. They just stopped writing. People were fucking romantics back then. Dear Gertrude, I miss you today. These waves, you know, like, crashed against the boat and we lost seven men. I also lost Timothy, our son. But we will make another. That was also the other thing. Is like People just died all the time back in those days. Like early exploration, kids just froze. They just wake up in the morning and be like, like they were out of eggs. They're like, God damn it. Fucking Brent just passed away. I guess he was cold last night. He was whining. I thought he was being dramatic, but okay, I guess he was kind of cold. And they would just cut off limbs. I was watching Dances with Wolves, a classic, a classic. And they were just cutting limbs off. Like if someone got shot or something, they're like, well, that's going to get infected. We're going to cut your fucking leg off at the knee. Because we just don't want to deal with it. How nuts. That was our answer for everything. Um, but back in those days, if you didn't want to be with your family, like exploration, you could just like walk across a mountain and start over. There's no court system. You're going to pay alimony or child support. You just walk away and you're like, I'm done. I'm just going to ride my horse. And then I'll start over in the next village until your fucking kid shows up at 30. And he's like, father, I have been searching for you to avenge, you know, and then your own fucking kid fucking fights you to the death. That was just life back then. Okay. And when those people got food poisoning, they didn't, they didn't complain about it. They didn't even have a toilet. They just, they thought it was like the devil. Like they fucked up. Like that was always the thing with like thunder and lightning and ailments. They're like, well, God is punishing us. So we fucked up. They'll eat some wild berries out in the, in the wilderness. Do you think Eve actually got food poisoning from the apple? And that whole story of Eve and the apple is really about food poisoning. And she thought it was child, like painful childbirth, but it really was. She had food poisoning. And it was a shit baby that she gave birth to. That's why it was painful. Wow. This is mind blowing. It makes sense. Listen, she got herself a $2.99 apple. She ate it. She got sick. Therefore, she said, God didn't want me to eat this. I fucked up. I ate from the tree of sins, just like I ate from the ensalada of sins. All right. This is all coming together. We're wrapping it up nicely. If you stick stuck around for the entire episode, Maybe you found this as a payoff. But I feel like God was punishing me last night. If we're being real, ladies and gentlemen, I've been too cocky. 
these past couple years talking about the vid, how it's the sniffles, how it's a cold. And God said, you know what? I'm going to make you feel like you ate a laced cupcake and the apple of sin. You like this show 1883, I'm going to have you experience a regular Tuesday for them. How crazy. We have fucking filtered bottled water. Those people would just drink from a river and get dysentery and be like, well, my stomach's going to be on fire for the next two weeks if I live. Oh, my stomach's just going to be distended forever. And I'm over here complaining in a house that has central air. Bitch, Evan. But when I talk about the show 1883, it do, I honestly think it does give you perspective on life. And it's easy to, loo- to lose perspective. Like when my fiance and I drove out from California to Texas, I was like, that was our version of the Oregon Trail. And it was so much easier. I did it in two days. No Native Americans tried to kill me. No thieves tried to rob me. And you know what's crazy is I was finding parallels because I remember parking at a shitty little uh, hotel in El Paso. Listen, when you're just, there's no way I'm going to spend good money to sleep only at a hotel. I, we were going to get to a hotel at like, I think we we're going to drive to like midnight then wake up, I think, five or six and drive the rest of the way. I was literally just going to be in this hotel room for like five hours, maybe. Um, So I was like, let me get the cheapest hotel I can right on the edge of town so I can easily just like, I'm not dealing with any city traffic and I just get back on that open road. Yeehaw. And that's all fine and dandy when you're booking a $40 hotel until you actually have to stay at that hotel and you pull in at midnight. And there's shady characters looking like they're playing dice and shit in the back alley where you have to park. I parked a truck. We go in, check in, put everything in there. And then the rest of the night, my dog Beowulf is just like asleep on the fucking bed. She's just like, is this my life now? I'm just a traveling dog. We had a good thing going. I had my own fucking bed. Now I'm just traveling. Like she's a goddamn gypsy dog. And most of that night, I would wake up and just peek out the window to make sure that stuff wasn't getting fucked with on the truck. Because I tied bags and bags down on top of our truck. And uh, I didn't want to take it down because I knew it was going to take me 45 minutes, an hour to take it all apart, bring it inside, and then 45 minutes to an hour to put it back up there in the morning. I was like... I ain't got that kind of time. But that was my version of the Oregon Trail. Watching out for fucking thieves and shit. People trying to rob us. But I did that shit in two days. I didn't have to bring any horses or mules or anything. So much easier than trying to bring a wagon across the Oregon Trail. How fucked up is that? They would just say it was the Oregon Trail. But it really was like, it was just kind of looking like a road over hills. Like there was no real trail or literally was just a trail. It wasn't a road. And what would be on the sides of the fucking road? Dead people, burnt down wagons, skulls and skeletons of the people who just fucking didn't make it. And you just got to keep going. We have it so much easier. And I love that. Okay. I romance the West. I romance olden times. But the truth is, if I got food poisoning back then, your boy would probably end it all. Put me in the river and let me float away, Christ. Okay. Just let me float away. Because you'd be chopping wood all the time. This is not a good time, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening to this episode. 
Did I have the most energy today? No, but they're not all going to be energy. Okay. And that's why you just got to be real sometimes. Keep it 100 that you ain't feeling good. Your boys, tum tum. Just trying to fight against them, trying to keep me down. But I said, you know what? The show fucking goes on. I'm going to let a little food poisoning fuck up my podcast. Yeah, I am. But I'm still going to put it out. I'm still going to put it out. Doesn't matter. I eat the fucking apple of the sin or whatever the tree is. Of the tree of knowledge. That's what it was. Hashtag Bible. All right. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys. And remember, no matter what, I still love you.